Adventures of Superman, Roads Not Taken Part 2, The Dark Side of Life. Well, Superman had escaped the alternate Earth where he was a villain named Sovereign to end up on another Earth, an Earth ruled by Darkseid, an Earth where he either failed to defeat Darkseid or never existed. He was going to soon find out. After landing what used to be the Metropolis River, it was pretty much dried up. Everything was a desert, a wasteland, destruction all over the place, and who knew how many people were still alive. All was going to be found out very soon. Well, Superman was wondering what's going on. His first thought was to get out of danger. At least there was sunlight around still, sunlight that was recharging his powers. So he decided to take to the air and destroy a few parademons with his heat vision. And the parademons he was zapping were all blowing up as they were hit by the beams from his eyes. Superman's attack on the parademons soon drew their attention as they screeched and began chasing after him. Well, Superman was making short work of them, the ones that were chasing him in the air, by shooting at them with his heat vision. But, as the chase was starting to get long, Superman heard anti-aircraft guns firing and the shells exploding in the air and taking out a lot of parademons that were pursuing him. Superman looked where the gunfire was coming from below. He saw several anti-aircraft guns on big trucks and he saw a soldier, one lone soldier, uh, signaling him to come down. Well, Superman quickly dove down and landed hard. Superman walked up to the soldier and said, well, well uh, soldier, what's going on here? The soldier looked in shock and said, it's you. It's, it's you. You're, you're back from the dead. Holy crap. You, you're back from the dead. Superman then realized that in this alternate world, he died. Probably died at the hands of Doomsday, but he never came back like in his world. Well, Superman says, well, soldier, take me to your leader. The soldier says, right away, sir, right away. He, the soldier gets on the radio and is like, Colonel Lane, Colonel Lane, you won't believe who you saved us. Rem that blip on the radar you picked up, it was Superman. He's back from the dead, Colonel. Superman can hear the voice of a female, a familiar female, ringing out from the radio. You better not be playing a cruel joke on me, soldier said the voice on the radio angrily. The soldier said, No, Colonel, ma'am, I'm not playing a, a joke on you. It's really him, the man of steel, the man in blue, who died six years ago. He's back from the dead. Well, the soldier gets off the radio and says, Can you fly me to the base? I'll guide you. Superman says, Sure thing, soldier. Superman grabs the young soldier and lifts him in the air, and they take off flying. They fly through the air as the soldier guided him to their hideout. Well... The two landed, and the soldier hit the keypad on the door to open the base. Well, it was busy inside the base as soldiers were walking around armed with their rifles, but there was something different about these soldiers. The one thing that was different about these soldiers that Superman noticed was that the uniforms they were wearing was worn patched up six ways from Sundays it seemed like they were wearing the same uniform in combat for an untold number of years and they just do patchwork as soon as it gets torn plus they all were dirty disheveled they smell bad like they had no access to personal hygiene products 
or anything to keep themselves clean. Plus, they all looked very thin and sickly looking. They haven't had anything nutritious to really eat and who knows how long. They were just pretty much running on willpower. The will to survive, the will to triumph. But for how long? These were the sorriest and most sad looking soldiers that Superman's ever seen. But he admired their tenacity to fight on. There is one thing that a lot of living beings possess is the will to survive at all costs. No matter how down you are, no matter how sick you are, no matter if you're dying, you always will fight till the end. And here, in this alternate world, humanity was staring death at the face, not by Darkseid's doing, but Darkseid had a hand in this. They were staring death at the, in the face from starvation. They probably had nothing to eat, nothing to nourish themselves in a very long time, except whatever they get from the government, what's left of it, at least, or whoever's trying to run the military operation in this world against Darkseid. But there was one thing for sure, Superman had to put a stop to this. It was the only way they would survive. He knew what his purpose here today was now. Well, as the young soldier took him through the busy base, he took him right to Colonel Lane. He wanted to see who this Colonel Lane was and if his suspicion was correct. Well, they reached Colonel Lane. The soldier introduced him to Colonel Lane. He says, Colonel Lane... You know this man, he's the real deal, it is Superman. Colonel Lane turned around, and it was who he w thought it would be. It was Lois. Now she was a colonel, leading a resistance movement. But the beautiful young woman he knew was just like the rest of these soldiers, bone dry from starvation, dirty, her hair disheveled, and she was bearing the few scars of battle and it were a lot she's seen her share of battles and her face was a face of shock happiness and anger she was like my god you're back you're back from the dead well you're too late superman she said angrily well superman says i i don't know what's going on here let me tell you i'm not the same superman that died six years ago she says, what do you mean? Well, Superman explained the situation, and he explained pretty much what happened to him on the Earth that he's from, that he did die six years ago, but maybe six, seven months later, he was brought back to life by the Eradicator. But on this Earth, he was never brought back to life. Well, Colonel Lane, Lois, explains, well, after your counterpart here died... The Eradicator, Superboy, and Steel were no match against Darkseid when he came here to take over to seize upon your death. They all were defeated. Then we fought and fought and fought, but he leveled everything. Darkseid destroyed this earth, turned it into a wasteland. Those of us who survived, we just banded together and just did this fighting for so many years now. What, four? Three, I can't, I can't even tell the number of years I've been fighting. Then Lois went on to continue her story. Then my dad just gave me the rank of colonel all of a, all of a sudden. And then I was thrust into the position of leadership, fighting, leading an army. And I lost a lot of men over the years, but war has sharpened me. I don't lose men in battle like I used to. Now I just lose more men due to starvation, due to, to, to disease and due to suicide. Those are were, are killing my men, our men, and women, she remembered to say, and women too. So we're all just fighting what seems to be a losing war, but now, Lois said angrily, you show up. An alternate version of you, Superman. Look at you. Can you defeat Darkseid? I forgot about the extent of your powers. It's been so long since you died, or your counterpart here died. Well, Superman, puzzled and trying to think of good words to say, said, Yes, I can. Don't quote me on that, he said, but I can. I know I can. I just need information. Where is he hiding out at? What's he planning? 
you know, just the usual stuff that military you military can provide me, and I can take care of the rest. Well, Colonel Lane said, I will give you all the information, Superman, but I'm warning you, you fail, and that's it for humanity. We're all dead. It doesn't take a sharp super sight to see the state we're all in. We're all on our last legs here, said Lois. Superman says, I know, and if I, will, if I have to die trying, I will. Lois let out a smile. She says, follow me. Well, Superman followed Lois out from the bunker onto the top of an observation platform. She pointed her finger outwards to a giant beam of energy emanating from the ground in the distance, shooting up infinitely into the sky. She says, see that, Superman? I don't know what that is. This thing has just started to appear for the last week. I don't have the resources anymore to get an intelligence report on it, but just by the looks of this, it's not good. It's coming from his hideout about 15 miles away, and I can't get there. We cannot get there. My my soldiers are not healthy enough for an attack. All we just do now is just fend off parademons as much as we can. I, I've just... Lois was about to break down. Superman then quickly grabbed Lois into his arms and held her tightly against his chest as Lois began crying, saying, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to deal with this anymore, she said to Superman. Every day, they get stronger, we get weaker. I don't know how I survived this long. I'm a screw-up. I'm a blunder. I'm not a military commander. I don't know why my dad gave me this rank, she said to Superman. Superman said in his calm voice, It's okay, Lois. Your dad gave you this rank because he knew you were a strong woman. He knew you were a natural leader like he is. So he figured that his own daughter can lead an army. He needed all the help he can get. Just by what you told me and just by what I see around here, it seems like a lot of people died and they were just going to give people ranks and using his rank as general he just gave you colonel and just you know knew you're gonna make the best of it then superman asked how's general lane doing lois wiped away the tears sniffling said dad died about four weeks ago he died from his diabetes there's no medicine to treat it a lot of people are dying from medicines that we once had to treat these things diabetes high blood pressure and now just other diseases that have attacked us polio smallpox measles stuff that we eradicated came back because we don't have the the technology anymore to to make medicines to fend these off the vaccines well, then Superman proceeded to gently wipe away the tears from Lois's cheeks with his thumb. And he says, Lois, I'm going to stop Darkseid once and for all. And you, you could hold me to that. And it ends today, right now, he says. Then he gently gives Lois a passionate kiss. And Lois quickly threw her arms around him as they kissed each other with such fire, such passion. She hadn't seen him in six years since he died. And Superman hasn't seen Lois. Clark hasn't seen Lois since she left for Seattle in his world a couple years ago. Soon as he got done kissing, she says to Superman, Don't die on me this time. Come back to me. I need you to rebuild this earth. Superman says to Lois, I can't guarantee anything. Even if I succeed, I have to find a way to get back to my my world, he says. But he says to Lois, always know this, and no matter what world we live in, and no matter how many worlds I cross to try to get home, I will always love you, always, he says to Lois. Lois says, I always will love you, Superman. I always will love you as they hugged each other tightly. Then they let go of each other and then Superman takes off into the air. Well, Superman arrives at Darkseid's hideout. It was like any other hideout that Darkseid would make for himself. Uh, practical yet very decorative with the apocalyptic architecture and art. In the center 
of his hideout was some sort of giant energy totem or pole or something that was shooting the beams of white and blue energy into the sky. Superman came for a closer look. He wondered, what the heck is this thing? Suddenly, he heard a deep, dark, familiar voice that was calling to him. So, Superman, you're back from the dead. What a surprise. Superman turns around and sees, uh, in the darkness, bright red eyes looking at him. Suddenly, the figure emerged from the dark. It was none other than Darkseid. Superman says, Well, I have, but it's a complicated story. Darkseid says, Well... I know it's you, but I know it's not you. You're some different Superman, but yet the same man. Superman says, like I said, it's a long story, Darkseid, so how are you? I still see you got that skin condition that makes you look like a stone gargoyle. Darkseid says, well, Superman, I still see you're full of jokes. Well, joke all you want. Pretty soon, there's going to be nothing to joke about when every... Living being in the universe is subverted to my will. Superman says, I take it that this thing over here behind me is going to accomplish that. Darkseid says, yes, Superman. After all these years, I finally, thanks to my guess about humanity, figured the anti-life equation. And I built this energy totem, along with many others, across the worlds I've conquered. Connecting it. And as soon as I walk into this one, all life on this universe will be subverted to my will. Superman then replies back, well I can't let you do that, Darkseid. So me and you will fight for the last time. Darkseid says, alright Superman, let this be the last time. And the two began fighting each other, throwing punches and kicks, each one with superhuman strength. Well, Superman was knocked through a pillar. He was a bit on the sore side. It was a hard punch. Darkseid began mocking him. Well, well, Superman. You're no match for me, Kryptonian. Superman says, You're going to find out. Full of surprises, stone face. Superman gets up, flies at Darkseid, and lays in another round of punches and kicks. With Darkseid uh, on the daze, Superman goes flying around high speed and does his high speed super punch. Then Superman comes in for the kill as he, with all his might, punches through Darkseid's chest plate, reaching in and ripping out his heart. Now Superman held Darkseid's beating black heart in his hand. Darkseid saw as Superman had his beating heart in his hand. Then Superman says, it's over, and proceeds to crush Darkseid's black heart. Darkseid lets out a loud, deep no. No! As his flesh began to fall apart. Now Darkseid was a shadow of what he used to be. Instead of being muscular, he was skeletally thin. His skin was flaking off. Well, I should say his skin being stone, stone pebbles began falling off his skin. He was dying. Then Superman goes in for the Coupe de Grasse and says to Darkseid, It ends for good this time. Then Superman 
flies pushing dark side into the energy totem along with himself with the two in there especially in dark side's dying state he couldn't receive or do any thing with the power that he was channeling but the presence of dark side dying and superman in there began an overload Well, after the overload came a bright flash of blinding white light and a loud explosion. Well, Colonel Lane and the rest of the soldiers heard the explosion. They ran out of the bunker to see the giant mushroom cloud where the energy beam shooting up to the heavens once was. She knew in her mind that Superman succeeded, and by the looks of it, he was not coming back. But, after the explosion, she saw something. Her and the rest of the soldiers saw grass sprouting up, the trees coming back to life. Everything was restoring back to life. Greenery, flowers, animals. The earth was returning to life. Darkseid was truly dead, gone. Superman succeeded. He sacrificed his life and restored life to Earth. Everybody began cheering and singing and dancing. The war was truly over. Even the parademons that littered the skies were gone. Welp, Lois began to shed a tear. She lost Superman again, but at least this war was over. The nightmare was over. She could rebuild. They all could rebuild. But the nightmare wasn't over for Superman. Instead of flying back to the bunker he was back in that tunnel of colored lights somehow someway the explosion from the overloading energy totem uh, sent him or through the gate or open the gate well either way superman was on his way to another destination where to next the man of steel wondered as he flew down the corridor of lights and weird sounds finally a bright flash of light and he fell on the ground again. He picks himself up, dusts himself off, and looks around. It was beautiful. It was green. Birds were singing. Everybody was at peace. But he saw the cars. The cars were futuristic looking. And he saw the buildings of Metropolis. Some of them were familiar. Some of them were new, more high-tech looking designs. Could he be? Could he be in the future in his time? Or in the future in an alternate timeline? He will soon find out. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for the final chapter and The Roads Not Taken Part 3.